In this video, we're going to be exporting a mesh from Substance 3D Modeler and then setting up the UVs a little bit if required and then texturing it inside Substance 3D Painter. Keep in mind for the Modeler part, Modeler is in beta and is still under active development. Things might change, workflows might seem a bit broken or weird, but this video is just to show you what's possible with it. So I'm using the wheel mesh from my previous video but you can use your own mesh that you've created as well. Some things might differ a bit if it's a larger project, but that doesn't matter much. So once you're happy with the way this looks, I'm gonna to go to File, Export, and I get the Export dialog. And there's a few things to keep in mind here. I'll go from the top to the bottom. You choose the file format. I'd recommend FBX for now. Uh, USD is a pretty good format, but the problem with USD is that you cannot open it inside Stager or Painter for now, while FBX works everywhere. USD is preferred though. If you're gonna go through Blender or 3ds Max or anything else, you can use USD, but keep in mind you'll have to export it to FBX to go to Substance 3D Painter. I'm just gonna grab FBX for now. And these others up here, there's small options. Preserving instances doesn't matter so much right now. It only works for USD as well. Positive transform scales means that if you've ever flipped an object, it's not going to have normal issues inside Stager. And vertex color, um, this keeps the surface colors, but it doesn't always work. Most important is the mesh output option here. So these four raw triangles, this means the actual raw triangles that you're seeing in Modeler. This will be super heavy and not optimized at all. And you don't even get any options. Straight dump from the program, it's probably the quickest option to export as well, but the files would be huge and hard to work with. Triangles does a remesh and you have a quality slider. So it's basically a percentage from the total amount of triangles and you set it based on what you want. This one's pretty good for sharper hard surface objects. Then quads does a quad remesh and uh, this one's pretty interesting for if you wanna keep all quads and you wanna have more organic meshes that need to deform and you set a target quad count on that. Adaptive means that it's going to put more uh, detail in quads in areas that require it. Most interesting, which is the one with the least amount of work, is UV mapped triangles. You get a bit more options then. You can choose if you want to go for hard surface or organic. And basically hard surface is the triangles option and organic is the quads option. But unfortunately for now, organic will still be turned into triangles. So we're not calling it quads. I'm going to go for hard surface because it keeps more detail. Organic tends to be nicer flowing meshes, but... Um, you'll do some detail. Things tend to get softer with organic. So I'm going to go for that and I'll set my, my target track. Actually, 60K is, is fine for this. I could go a little higher, maybe 80 or something. And I will click export, choose a location to save that. And I'm going to call this one wheel UV01. And I'll click save and it's going to export. Now, this takes a while and it's pretty heavy on your computer. So my suggestion is to just leave it and go have a coffee, take a little break, come back in a few minutes. Um, the larger the mesh, the longer it takes. Once your export is done, you have an FBX file here. So let's take a quick look at this with the Windows 3D viewer. And this mesh looks decent. Up close, we can see that there's a few issues. But if you turn on the wireframe, that's actually pretty interesting. Um, it's done some adaptive stuff for the edges, so more polygons there. And if we switch to the UVs, we see it even has UVs that have a bit of distortion in seams, but they seem all right. So it's best to make a few edits to this in another 3D application, like Max, Maya, or Blender. I'm using 3ds Max in this case, but it really doesn't matter. The operations are very simple. So I'm going to go in here, and I'll import this into 3ds Max. So open it up, click OK. And this comes in with a bunch of groups over here and 3ds Max they, doesn't really use those. So I can just delete them. And I think in Maya, it might be different. Now, this doesn't have any normals. And if I go through Max to change it, I have to reassign the normals. So the first thing I like to do is select everything. And I found the best thing is to use the weighted normals. So the face weighted normals in 3ds Max. This does automatic normals and it does a bit of weighting based on the, um, the size of the triangle. So I'll do an auto smooth as well to add some hard edges like that. And the default settings, honestly, they're okay. They're totally fine. Now let's take a look at the UVs for this. So I'm going to add a unwrap UV modifier to look at them, open it up. And you can see that it's packed everything to a single sheet here. 
That's fine for simple meshes, like for this I'd get away with it, but for something more complex you might want to have multiple texture sets, and this is the main reason you'd have to go through Max or Blender. So to fix that, the easiest way is to open up your material editor, and I'm going to create two different sets here, so I'll call this one set one, and let's just for the sake of making it obvious, give this a slightly different color, and I'll go into this one, and I'll call it set two, and I don't need to give it a different color. So if you want to have a different texture set for the wheel versus the rim, I can assign a material like that and then assign the second set here. And this means that once you get to Painter, you can have two different texture sets for that. I don't even have to repack the UVs. That's all I have to do. So I'll export two versions, uh, one with a single texture set and one with two. Let's export that. So and then finally, just to take one step back, if you want to do normal map baking from the high poly, which is totally optional. You do not have to do this. If you export with enough details, then it'll totally work fine. You can ex do that as well to follow the game workflow. I'll export this. And best for the high poly is the raw triangles. For this wheel, it's kind of manageable. You can still work with it. So I'll export that. We'll call it wheel raw. Hit save, and that takes a while as well, but it's faster than the um, remesh and the UVs. It's only a couple of seconds. There you go, export it. Now to be 100% sure, you should also process this in Max just to be sure that the file works. I've noticed that the high poly can sometimes have issues. So I'm going to reset this and not save it. Then I will import my raw. Okay, so once that comes in, I can delete this root node. And again, this one doesn't really have much normals on it yet. So if I want to fix that, the easiest way, I could use weighted normals, but I like to use the normal modifier here. Set it to not flip, but to unify the normals. Wait for that to calculate. Okay, and then once I'm happy with that, I can export this again, just to be sure that I've processed it through the same pipeline. I'll call this one wheel, I, and save it out. Now, to be totally clear, this baking isn't going to be ideal. There's not going to be any match by name. Uh, you'd have to do manual naming of the instances because they are not the same between the low poly and the high poly for now. So just so you're aware, the bakes will be slightly limited. So once that is properly exported, we can move over to Substance Painter. All right, so I've got all my meshes here. I'm going to start a new file and I have to pick my mesh. If you have one texture set, it's pretty easy. Um, I can just set the scale to a document resolution to 2048. No auto unwrap, no UV tile workflow, nothing specific is required there. I can just click OK and import. If you set up your texture sets, you will have to do repacking unless you did that in Max or Blender. So if you choose one with two texture sets, you turn on auto unwrap, go to options. For the seams, we're going to generate only missing data because it's already done. For the UV islands, only missing data, but for the packing, we will recompute all. So Painter will check for each individual texture set and repack to use the most of your UV space. That's actually pretty good if you uh, if you do that. I'm not going to use that one in uh, in this case. Um, so let's go back to one UV set, turn off auto unwrap, and I'm going to click OK to import that. In. So our wheel comes in. It's looking decent. Again, if we zoom up close, you might see some normal issues. And to keep it really simple, the basic thing to do is you hit Control Shift B to bake, or you go to Texture Set Settings and then find the Bake Mesh Maps button. So Control Shift B. I turn off thickness, and for ID, um, I can do it by Mesh ID or Poly Group and choose random colors. I'll set the resolution to 2K, and I can bake those textures really quick. So that's super fast if you do it from the mesh itself. So that already looks a bit better with some AO and it's totally usable. If you want to do it from the high poly, then I have to go into these settings again and I'm going to load up the wheel high over here and use that. And just to make it clear, if you're good at baking already, match by mesh name won't work. You have to set that up manually just now. It's quite a bit of extra work. I'm not showing that in this video. It's something you can figure out yourself. So to change that, I'll bake from that file and this is quite a bit slower because the high poly is a bit bigger so it takes a bit longer you can go have a coffee as well if it takes a long time all right with that big done i'll just zoom in so just to show you this this isn't necessarily that much better um, i probably have to increase the resolution and you can see i'm getting some missed rays here 
So to be totally honest, not sure if baking from a high poly is totally worth it. I'm going to switch back to um, not using that. So do a real quick bake like so. This workflow will for sure be improved in the future for baking from high poly. So with that done, now it's just some texturing in Painter that we're going to do. Uh, there's really not that much to it. Uh, I'm not going to explain too much. Uh, we're just going to have some fun and apply some simple textures to this. So I'm going to make a paint layer here. If you add a fill layer like this, because of the UV seams that we have, it's a good idea to always use triplanar inside Painter. It just looks a little bit better. And then finally, I just want to do a little bit of uh, the metallic looking chips. Happy with this. Next, I'm going to create one for the rubber. Same idea. I'll just create a quick layer like this. Get my basic rubber tint going on in there. And we'll add another layer that only does roughness and be a little bit shinier. One trick that I like to do as well to get this to look a little bit better is I'm going to create a layer that works only on the edges. And it's still got a few issues, but if we reduce the intensity, up this guy, add just a bit of tint to that rubber. It works okay. And then I'm gonna mask this out by using a geometry mask and turn this one back on, have my wheel appear like that. And then the last thing I wanna do is I've actually added a little new, uh, little texture of fun SBSAR to work with this tire sidewall here. I'm gonna drag this over to Painter. I'll say it's a procedural and I'm gonna keep this one for the project. I'll import it. This little one, I'm going to add a black mask. I'm going to add a fill to that mask and then drop in my tire sidewall. That looks really messed up. So if I set it to triplanar projection, and you can see that now I can scale this up and down to just perfectly fit like so. Turning off the tiling is going to help as well. So let's see, that is under. So we're going to set the crop to drop it to the shape and this SBSCR has a nice setting for the sidewall height so I can sort of depending on my wheel I can make it a little bit smaller and scroll it down like so and then the last thing I want to do is I'm obviously going to turn down that color a lot roughness I can make it a little bit rougher and uh, the fun part give it a little bit of extra height like so to get my sidewall working on the tire. So that's the part in Painter. Easy. Once you're happy with the texture in Painter, you can make a render of this. And if I use File, Send To, Send to Substance 3D Stager, it's going to quickly export it and bring it into Stager. And it even opens it up if you uh, don't have it open. Now, this is coming a bit too big. I probably messed up the units in 3ds Max. I can just lock the size transform. I'll set this down to be a bit of a smaller size. Move it into the middle, press F Focus and rotate this around. Then under lighting, I can find a good uh, HDR. So I like this Tomoko Studio. So I'll drop that on. And let's set this at a certain angle. I like to turn on ray tracing as well because it gives me a good idea of what the final quality is gonna be like. So that's looking decent. I just want a bit of a rim light to highlight that nice profile. So I'll click on plus to add a light into my image lighting here. And if I look at it from the back and then press this aim Point, I can aim the lighting at the back of the wheel over there. So going back, I don't see too much of it yet, but if I increase the intensity and I can play a bit with the height, see, let's get that in a good position. I can get that rim light to show up. So maybe make it a little bit higher like that and perhaps tone down the intensity just a little bit. This looks about right. This is what I'm happy with. So once I'm happy with that render, I could even take the one from the viewport. So let's just undo that. I could take the one from the viewport, turn off the grid, click share here, and I can even snapshot this as PNG and save it out, or copy it to clipboard, or make a full render by going to the render tab. We have separate tutorials on that. And that's it for this video. With this workflow, you can go from modeler to painter to stager in about an hour to create this wheel if you know what you're doing. So it's quite a bit faster than other workflows. It's not perfect, obviously, but less technical hurdles to get creative, which is what I quite like about this. Good luck and have fun with it.